I'm Arnold Palmer, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Good Seasons, the salad dressing mixes that let you create your own dressings. Different dressings with flavor and freshness you can't buy ready-made. Live from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of I've Got a Secret. I would like you to meet the members of our panel. First, of course, as always, we have Mr. Bill Cullen, and next, while Bess Meyerson is off on a week's vacation, we are delighted to have a lovely lady who will be starring in the DuPont show of the week on June 23rd, Miss Lauren Bacall. And while Henry Morgan could not be with us tonight in spirit, he is here in person. <laughs> and finally, we have Miss Betsy Palmer, and that's the group. <laughs> Lauren? Lauren, we'd like to welcome you to your debut on I've Got a Secret. Well, thanks very much, Gary. I'm delighted to be here. I've never been on a panel before, as you know, so... I you're... know it, but don't worry. You're in good company over there. They'll foul you up <laughs> as best they can. <laughs> good, that's what I'm telling you. Not really. About. Let me say, yeah. panel, uh, before we start to play the game, that in case you're wondering about this sh uh, shipping crate, forget it. It has absolutely nothing to do with our first contestant. You will be hearing all about it a little later in the show, but right now, put it out of your mind. All right, I assume now we're all set to play the game, so maybe welcome our first contestant, please. <laughs> Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? My name is Winifred Caldwell, and I'm from Buffalo, New York. This is Mrs. Caldwell. Mrs. Caldwell, forgive me, I'm going to move you over an inch or two. There we go. <laughs> Final Mrs. Caldwell is an artist whose works have been widely exhibited in Buffalo, as well as being produced on, a, a reproduced rather, on greeting cards. However, there is a unique quality to her work, which we're going to have you guess. So, Mrs. Caldwell, if you'll whisper your, what is unique about your work, we'll show it at the same time to the audience at home. <laughs> unique indeed. Mm -hmm. Panel, to help you classify Mrs. Caldwell's secret, the clue concerns something she does. And Betsy Palmer, we will start the game with you, please. All right. Mrs. Caldwell, is this um, a technique that you use in, may in your painting or in your um, art work? Yes, it is. Is it something that would be found in everybody's home? I would like it to. <laughs> oh, well, then it's something that maybe you have been instrumental in starting yourself. Yes. It's something you've discovered? I think there's an area of misunderstanding here. I think when you said, uh, is, 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 do you use... Well, say, for instance, is it something that would be found in a kitchen? No. No. Now, about what Betsy is talking about, she's talking about the technique that you use. I see. And, and it could not be found in all homes, but it could be found in many homes. In many homes. Yes. Would it be found in one room more than another, though? I think so. Uh, would it be found in, uh, say, for instance, the living room? I hope so. You hope so. My I think, Ms. Caldwell, you're still thinking about the end product, the artwork, and I think Betsy is talking about the, uh, the implement yes. used. Yes. I see. And she's thinking about it, the... Is it, it is an implement of some sort, then, yes. maybe, that you use. Uh, All right, we've lost the $20. We have 60 to go, and we go, please, to Bill Cullen. Ms. Caldwell, is the medium you use other than paint or ink or an accepted artist medium? Yes. Is it a liquid? No. Is it something that is ordinarily not thought of as being used to do artwork? Yes. You glue parts of something on the card, is that correct, or on the original? Uh, no. Don't glue parts like butterfly. No, that wouldn't be nice. <laughs> uh, was it ever living, the, the medium you used? Was no. it ever alive? You mean does she paint with a dead chicken or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> no, it's a great thought. <laughs> My child. <time. laughs> uh, all right, we've lost $60. We have 20 to go. And Lauren Bacall, please. Now, this, it's established that it is painting. No. No. So, uh, we have not... No, we don't agree that a brush is necessarily used. You don't agree? 
So, do you agree with me? No, no a brush no, a is not necessary. A brush is not necessary. Do you use your fingers? Apparently. Yes. Do you fingers. mix anything with your fingers? No. Hmm. Nothing to do with anything like food coloring that is used, is it? No. All right, panel, I'm going to... I'm going to show you one of Mrs. Henry Caldwell's has. drawings. Yes, but, Henry? well, Henry hasn't guessed yet. Henry, I'm... <laughs> I don't mind. No, Carlos, I, I mind, though, Henry. I don't have a thought in my head. Go right <laughs> Well, Mrs. Caldwell, all of, from what the rest of the panel has not established... <laughs> yeah. Do you use any mechanical device? I do. Do you use a vacuum cleaner? No. Well, I thought, you know, you reverse it and you Surely. could blow stuff onto something. But uh, I don't. You've seen Salvador <laughs> Dali work on this show. Nothing would surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mrs. Caldwell, do you use anything with a motor in it? No. See, I told you. You didn't have to come to me. I... <laughs> well, I'm going to show you one of Mrs. Caldwell's drawings to give you a further clue. Will you join me over at the panel yes, desk, please, please, Mrs. Caldwell? Now, well, I'll give you a... I look at it. Now, this is a blown-up version of the original. Okay. That is an enlarged version. Anybody got an idea what the medium is? Ty typewriter. Uh, a typewriter. A yes. typewriter, yes. Oh, you are. Now, I have seen other so-called typewriter arts, but usually it was just X's formed into design. As you notice here, well, first let me show you the original. That'll give you an idea of the daintiness of it. Oh, it's And referring now to this, the water from the fountain here, you'll notice that it, it curves quite gracefully. How did you manage to do that? With just the brackets, the parentheses, and the dashes. But of course, I turned the paper many, many times. Oh, the drawing. So I continue to be drawing. Well, right. now, do you, would you make, have made a sketch of this? Nothing. I make no sketch. You just, I you just no start. No sketch. I start. Oh, you, oh, may I ask, in, in one this size, that yes. size, how long does it take you? Well, it takes hours. Of course, I never complete one at one time. You go back to it. Matter of fact, she has two or three designs going at one time sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it, I think she says hours. I think you put those hours to, uh, together, it would run into days for each I one, so. I should think. Yes. We have some further uh, demonstrations or, or further artworks here to show you. Now, uh, here again is an enlarged version of something she did called um, uh, Flower Symphony. Now notice how delicate these flowers are. So now what we have done, we have even further enlarged. We've just enlarged this one flower over here to give you an idea of how this is accomplished. Now here's the same flower here, and you'll notice this is just a bunch of W's. And when she wants shading, she puts W's over top of W's over top of W's. And then here in the center, this thing, which corresponds to the to that thing there, is two zeros or plus O's. Plus an error. Plus an <laughs> error, yes. It's a little, little slip of the tape right here. <laughs> and here again, you have the, the use of parentheses. But largely, this entire thing is done in W's. But is that a normal typewriter? An yes. Everyday typewriter? typewriter? I use a portable. She uses a portable at that, not even a standard. Mm -hmm. We have some other things here. And what uh, impresses me is the delicacy of them. Look at this farmyard scene. And the clouds. You're, you're very big with parentheses, aren't you? Oh, I like them. Yeah, they are. They're the clouds. And now, again, keep in mind this is enlarged. The blossoms over here are asterisks. Okay. And we have a couple of more. Now, look. Doesn't that look Japanese? Yes. Marvelous. See, not only does she have great patience and great imagination, but there's a great sense of design there. Thank you. Actually. And how did she ever start it? Yeah, how did you get started on this? Well, I saw a uh, contest one time, a typewriter contest, and it was made with the usual type, you know, the X's and O's. And I thought, well, one of these days I'm just going to try to draw with the typewriter in a style that would uh, resemble etchings. And that's why right. she calls them type etchings. And here is a very ambitious one, the last one we have to show you, unfortunately, a scene from Switzerland. And notice how the definite lines of the chateau here, strong and bold, and then very delicately reflected in the lake. It's a shadow of the, of the chateau. Sure. Mrs. Caldwell, this is fine. Thank you. Now, friends, our special guest this evening is one of the most highly respected names in the world of golf. 
the former winner of the U.S. Open, three times master champion, and on top of all that, the president of Arnold Palmer Putting Courses Incorporated of Atlantic City. Here is Arnold Palmer. <laughs> Now, most of us know about the tournaments that you have won, but would you fill us in on the Arnold Palmer Putting Courses, Incorporated? Well, Gary, uh, we headquarters our, headquarter our uh, courses in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and we franchise them all over the United States. Well, now, this is essentially uh, it's a very, very highly glorified version of what we used to call miniature golf, isn't it? Well, uh, that's right. It's uh, putting courses, and these courses, of course, are designed after courses that I've played all over the world. Oh, fam in other words, famous golf holes from the famous <coughs> golf that's courses right. of the world. Yes, sir. Fascinating. Now, I noticed uh, here that uh, you're taking another crack at the PGA Championship in Dallas on July 20th and 21st. That one has a special challenge for you, doesn't it? Well, it certainly does. It's one that I have never won, and... Uh, May I correct you? I think this is the only major one that you've never won. Isn't that right? Well, yes, it is. That's right. Well, it's going to be carried, friends, on the CBS television network, and we'll be rooting for you then, as we will be in all the tournaments that you're going to play in this week. Now, um, getting down to the business at hand panel, Arnold Palmer has a secret that he... Well, he actually doesn't believe this himself. But I've gone on, out on a limb, and I have assured him that his secret is true and that it will come to pass, that it will happen. So, Arnold, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we will at the same time reveal it to the audience at home. Well, t tell me more about that. Oh, boy. All right, can somebody bring, can somebody bring Lauren Bacall a glass of water? I have water. I just... Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mr. Palmer. I have a tickle in my throat. Does that have anything to do with your secret? <laughs> I hope not. Well, panel, a clue concerns something that is going to happen, and we'll give you a little time to recover, Lauren. We'll start with Henry. There you are. Oh, thank you. That's it. Yeah. The light Um, Mr. Palmer, <laughs> this thing is going to happen. Is that for... <coughs> Correct? Well, we're assuming it's going to happen. Does it have anything to do with the business you're in? Uh, you might say it does, yes. Is this in the nature of a promotion that we're doing? I would say none at all. Oh, now, why do we bother? <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, nobody. Do I, I think nobody criticizes. Can I have a life saver? Yes, you can. I, I have to... <laughs> <laughs> On that cheery note, we go over to Miss Betsy Palmer, please. Arnold, does it have anything to do with that red box that's on stage? Uh, no, it doesn't. No. Does it have anything to do with the uh, sport of golf? Yes, it does. It has to do with something that you have to do with, this, with golf. Mm. Uh, really, the secret, uh, he is involved in the secret, but it does not center about him, wouldn't uh, you say? That? Well, I have nothing to do with the, uh, that particular part of it. Yes, all right. $40 down, $40 to go, and we go to Bill Cullen. Is anybody here, Arnold, going to make, and I, this is because you didn't believe it, I say this, anyone here going to make a hole-in-one? Mm, not to my knowledge. <laughs> I don't think I mean, it could happen. <laughs> Unless you are, none of us are, I think. Uh, are, is one of us on the panel going to receive some golf instructions? Instructions? I don't think so. Definitely not. Sixty dollars down, twenty dollars to go, and learn if you've recovered, we'll take a crack yeah, at it with you. Stop huh? choking. Um, you said this has nothing to do with uh, with you directly. Is that right? Well, no, he is involved in the secret, but the achievement, as stated in the secret, uh, concerns someone else. Uh, is this going to happen in the near future? Yes. Uh, this week? Yes. No. Tonight? No. Oh. Panel, Arnold Palmer has two golf tournaments scheduled this week at the Westchester Country Club here in New York. On Thursday, it's the big Thunderbird Classic. And on the day, the day before that, on Wednesday, there is a pro amateur tournament. And this is where we have a treat in store for one member of the panel. Arnold Palmer is going to invite one of you to join him in this tournament. Thank you, Susan. Now, our, 
Our biggest problem is how to decide which one of you will be joining Arnold Palmer in this pro amateur tournament. So we decided that the most democratic way would be to have our studio audience applaud for the person they think deserves this honor. So I'll walk over behind the panel desk, and Arnold, if you'll join me, you can uh, you can judge the vote. Does anyone care, Doc? Do you intend I don't to win this, Arnold? I mean, you... <clears throat> Makes no difference. All right. He doesn't care. He now, doesn't we'll start with, with ladies. Right? We'll start with ladies first. Because everybody in the studio audience oh, yeah. who thinks that Betsy Palmer should be the logical one to be uh, involved with Arnold Palmer in this tournament. Let's <laughs> no, no, no. The panel's, you can't do that. The panel's <laughs> not allowed to vote. Audience. For heaven's sake. Too bad, Betsy. Well, looks like there you. you are. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's try yeah. Lauren Bacall. What do you think about Lauren Bacall? They don't think. Huh? What's going on here? Well, how about, how about all of you who want to vote for Bill Cohen? Well, guess who's going to play golf? Oh, oh, oh. Looks like we're not going to have any winners. How about Henry Morgan? <laughs> Henry Morgan. 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 Why didn't anybody appear? Arnold, uh, just judging it. from the applause, who would you say <laughs> <laughs> has been chosen by our audience? Well, our uh, very delicate applause meter says that Henry Morgan is the uh, winner. By a slight margin. By a slight margin. He was. Gee. Now, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, do you own a set of golf clubs? I don't even believe in golf. <laughs> I watch him on a, there's a show, you know, yeah. I, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's wonderful to watch on TV, you, you know, like, and, I, and the more yeah. I watch it, the more I know I couldn't do any part of it. Can well, I now, don't, him? don't worry about whether, because you can use, you're going to use his club. Well, that'll help. As a matter of fact, you will be carrying his, his club. Oh, okay. carrying <laughs> his club. Are you free on Wednesday? I'll make time. That's all. <laughs> well, that's why I said at the top of the show that we, we hope this was going to happen. We've checked out your schedule as much as we can, Henry, without coming right out and asking you. And I would be delighted to carry his club. Well, it's all for sweet charity, and I know you'll enjoy the experience. And by the way, they gave me an envelope, which and they haven't let me look into it. They said if Henry is not free on Wednesday, we have an alternative plan. Read what's in the envelope. Gary Moore, Moore caddy. caddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry you're available, but I would love to. I'm delighted. I want to wish you all the luck in the world in this forthcoming tournament, because for the first time in your life, you're going to be playing with a handicap. That's <laughs> 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 Our next guest panel is a young gentleman from England who has been delighting our audiences with his singing, his dancing, and his clowning on our Tuesday night variety show. Here is Mr. Roy Castle. <laughs> Roy? Roy, we're delighted to have you with us this evening. <laughs> Perhaps I can improve the communications. Excuse me while I push in a little knot hole. There we go. Take a little microphone. It's all right. It's all right. Good. Roy, welcome to I've Got a Secret. Ah, uh, thank you, Gary. This is my first appearance on the show, and I've been looking forward to it. Well, we're we're still looking forward to it. At any rate, Roy, I'm almost afraid to ask this question, but what are you doing in there? That's my secret, Gary. All right, then if you'll whisper to me, we'll show it at the same time to the audience at home. The clue concerns something that Roy Castle is doing in there, and we'll start the game with Caddy Henry. <laughs> uh, hey, is that on the up and up, by the way? What? Am I going to carry his club? You better jolly well be there, because we don't lie to the audience. They'll give you the starting time and everything. Marvelous. Uh, Roy? Yeah? Are you making something? Uh, no, no. Are you decent? <laughs> of course I'm decent. In show business parlance, friends, that means are you dressed? Oh, uh, yeah, of course I'm dressed. <laughs> are you alone? Yeah. Well, why are you hiding? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about you. <laughs> he, says, I've, he says, I've heard about you. <laughs> ah, yes. Um, uh, have you any thing back there with you? Any? Thing. Thing, yes. 
Ah. Yes, there is an object enclosed therein with him. $20 down, $60 to go. Betsy Palmer, please. Roy, is the object alive? No. <laughs> is it mechanical? Is it a what? Is it mechanical? Mechanical was the oh, word. Oh, yes, yes, it's mechanical, yes. Uh, is it uh, like, say, for instance, with wheels? Wheels, yes. <laughs> yes, like a bicycle or something. Like a bicycle. Well, it has wheels. $40 down, $40 to go, and we go, please, to, uh, to Bill Cullen. Are you comfortable, Roy? Pretty. I don't think it can be too comfortable because I'm hot out here myself, and he's been in there, so, you know, this crate yeah. has been in full view of the audience since before the show started, so uh, he can't be too comfortable. Is this object you have in there with you something that you would not ordinarily go into a box with alone? <laughs> yes, I, I, I think it's rather strange, actually. Is it too large to take into a normal size box? What yes, is a normal size? A box this size. A box this size, yes. Yeah. Is it too big for that box? No, it's not too big for this box. $60 down, $20 to go, and how would he have gotten it in if it's too big for the box? <laughs> Those Princeton kids in a phone booth, you know. They oh, no, 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 no. All right, now we go to Lauren Bacall, please. <laughs> uh, uh, does this thing with wheels have anything to do with children? Has it to do with children, Roy, this uh, device you are having there with you? No, nothing to do with children at all. Hmm. Is it brightly colored? Yes. Happens that it is. If you took the it wheels is. off, it would be your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. Private joke. <laughs> you dare repeat what Henry said? Sure, she can. Tell me yes. what he said. The, he said if you took the wheels off, would it be your grandmother? <laughs> I like the question. Yeah. Uh, is it only big enough for you, or could somebody else fit into it, too? Just big enough for me. Uh, oh, all right. right. Panel seeing is believing, so we will take a look at Roy Castle's secret as soon as I can get back here. All right, Roy, when you're ready, old buddy, come on out. <laughs> I love this car. It makes me feel like John Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> Roy, what manner of device is this? Well, it's, uh, it's what's called a Peel P50, actually. It's manufactured by the Peel Engineering Firm in the Isle of Man, England. Oh, it's a British car. Yeah. They make it on an island? Yeah. Must be a very small island. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's just a single seater, you know. It's very good for a bachelor, huh? Yes. You're not going to be a bachelor very long. He's going back to England to get married here in just, uh, just about a week or so. So my nose said, aww. <laughs> but now tell us, tell us more about the car. Like, for instance, how fast can it go? Oh, it can go 40 miles an hour. Uh, it can do 100 miles to one gallon of gas. 100 miles to a gallon? Yeah, and it weighs about 130 pounds. How much do you weigh? 140 pounds. <laughs> Here's the first time I've ever seen a man riding in an automobile that weighs uh, 10 pounds less than he does. Uh, you want to get out so we can take a yeah. look on the inside of it? Here we go. There it is. Yes. It's, not, it's not a bad car. It's got a starter. It's got a gear shift, three forward gears. It's got the accelerator, brake, and clutch, just like a, a grown-up car. <laughs> and it's made out of fiberglass, too. Yeah, it doesn't rust at yeah. all. Well, Roy, I want to thank you very much. For, uh, oh, you know, I, I feel awful about keeping you in there all the time. You feel all right, don't you? It's been a pleasure, Gary. It's been a pleasure. Good. Well, I'll be seeing you next fall on our show. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait. Whoa, wait. I'm uh, terribly sorry about your back and everything. Yeah. You're going back to London. I know a prominent osteopath I can recommend. <laughs> I think you'll be fully booked for quite a while. That's you? what I understand. Roy Castle, friends. <laughs> We'll be back with you right after this important message. Now, you know that's a child's yeah. toy. You know that's a child's toy. <laughs> it's not a child's toy, and it, it hasn't stalled all day. It's the first time that car has stalled on us. It always happens on the air. Lauren Bacall, 
many joys to you. Please come back and see us again, and we'll have some cough syrup ready for you. Is it over? Oh. It's all over, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Thank you. Friends, until next week, then, speaking for Lauren McCall and the rest of the panel, be very kind to each other, will you? And goodbye out there. I'm Arnold Palmer, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by... Good seasons the salad dressing mixes that let you create your own dressing. Different dressings with flavor and freshness you can't buy ready-made. Live from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of I've Got a Secret. I would like you to meet the members of our panel. First, of course, as always, we have Mr. Bill Cullen. And next, while Bess Meyerson is off on a week's vacation, we are delighted to have a lovely lady who will be starring in the DuPont Show of the Week on June 23rd, Miss Lauren Bacall. And while Henry Morgan could not be with us tonight in spirit, he is here in person. And finally, we have Miss Betsy Palmer, and that's the group. Lauren, Lauren, we'd like to welcome you to your debut on I've Got a Secret. Well, thanks very much, Gary. I'm delighted to be here. I've never been on a panel before, as you know, so... I you're... know it, but don't worry. You're in good company over there. They'll foul you up <laughs> as best they can. <laughs> good, that's what I'm telling you. Not really. You. Let me say, yeah. panel, uh, before we start to play the game, that in case you're wondering about this sh uh, shipping crate, forget it. It has absolutely nothing to do with our first contestant. You will be hearing all about it a little later in the show, but for right now, put it out of your mind. All right, I assume now we're all set to play the game, so may we welcome our first contestant, please. Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? My name is Winifred Caldwell, and I'm from Buffalo, New York. This is Mrs. Caldwell. Ms. Caldwell, forgive me, I'm going to move you over an inch or two. There we go. <laughs> panel, Mrs. Caldwell is an artist whose works have been widely exhibited in Buffalo, as well as being produced on, a, a reproduced, rather, on greeting cards. However, there is a unique quality to her work, which we're going to have you guess. So, Mrs. Caldwell, if you'll whisper your... What is unique about your work, we'll show at the same time to the audience at home. 